good morning everyone. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion, your old pal Jaw. Ta-da, it's not raining today. That means anything could happen. We have a lot to do today, so let's get it started. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And here's our fearless leader. Well, we can't really take him to the dog park and we can't really go hiking because everything's gonna be muddy. And I'm stealing the show. So I wanna go do a filming location today. Since it's the holiday season, it's Christmas, I wanna do my favorite Christmas movie. There aren't many locations you can do because it was all filmed on, the, uh, on a studio lot for the most part, but there is one thing that I haven't vlogged associated with this movie, so we'll go do that today. I wanna try and get my hair cut. Um, wanna go do some more Christmas stuff, maybe later this evening. There's some stuff I read about downtown that I thought would be fun to go check out, so it's gonna be a busy day and got to go to the post office and just got to run some random errands. So thanks for coming along with me, guys. <laughs> Let's do this. So what I was thinking of vlogging today was uh, one of the filming locations of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And this Winnebago even kind of reminds me of the movie. Good old Cousin Eddie. Well, tis the season to be merry. I've seen this movie easily a hundred times. I never get tired of this movie. I don't think I'll ever get tired of this movie. It's the funniest Christmas movie there is. In my opinion, um, I could watch it far more than A Christmas Story. Just perfectly cast all the way down to the grandparents and even the kids that play Rusty and Audrey. It's Juliette Lewis and Johnny Galecki. I mean, he's on Big Bang Theory and she's been in everything. So it's kind of crazy that every single person they cast for this pretty much, you know, became a star in their own right or already was a historic star. Now the movie's supposed to be set in Chicago, but like I said, it was pretty much all filmed out here. They did use Bullock's department store, which is no longer around. That's now like a law university or a law library. And then they used this house and then everything else was done on the uh, Warner Ranch. Can you take a guess where he's guiding me off to? Yeah, of course. Well, they definitely have the holiday spirit here. They're doing a photo event where you can get your photo with these guys. <laughs> I don't think we'll be in town during that though. First I was like, are they selling marijuana here? Nope. Close though. Meowawana. Catnip. So we're gonna get him this. Look how patient he is. So our location today is in Glendale. So the location that we came to see today is the mansion that Frank Shirley, who plays Clark Griswold's boss, lives in. Now, you see him throughout the movie because every time Clark encounters him, he can't remember his name. He calls him Bill, he calls him Mark, he calls him Carl, and, uh, and then even when Clark gives him that Christmas gift, it's the same gift that everybody gave him. So it just kind of shows what, what kind of like a boss this guy is. So throughout the whole movie, um, Chevy Chase playing Clark Griswold is, um, basically just like all the other vacation movies he's trying to give his family the greatest um, vacation holiday he can and this is the third installment in that series every um, installment every movie has different actors playing the kids um, in the second one in European vacation Frank Zappa's daughter moon unit was in there um, actually Dweezil is in a scene he's the one in European vacation that comes down on the bike down the stairs so in <laughs> Christmas vacation no Zappa members, but um, Beverly D'Angelo did bring Frank Zappa on the set while they were filming at the house. So this movie basically takes place um, mostly in California is where they filmed it. When you see the scenes that are up on the mountain for the, um, the sled race setting the land speed record, and when you see them driving and getting into the um, game of chicken with those two like rednecks, that's actually in Breckenridge, Colorado. Um, they built a whole set for um, the neighborhood of the house and everything, but there's a part in the movie where Chevy Chase um, goes on a rant when he finally gets his Christmas bonus, which is um, an enrollment in a Jelly of the Month Club. And he says, hey, if any of you are looking for any last minute gift ideas, bring my boss, Frank Shirley, right here so with a big ribbon on his head, and you see Cousin Eddie, played by Randy Quaid, you see the, uh, the squirrel start turning inside of his brain, and he takes off and then we see his Winnebago out in front of the mansion that we're about to see now. So behind this big wall right here, 
and they've let the hedges in front kind of grow up. That's the house that Cousin Eddie, we see his Winnebago parked out in front of, and that's where he abducts, kidnaps Frank Shirley. Now Frank Shirley is played by Brian Doyle Murray, the brother of Bill Murray, and he's also, he's in two of the movies. He actually is in this movie, and then he's also in um, National Lampoon's Vacation as the, uh, the guy who is renting out the cabins. So maybe we can see over the fence. That's where Cousin Eddie's Winnebago would have been parked, right out in front of there. Now that house, that same mansion was also used for the Aaron Spelling show, uh, Flamenco Road. Definitely not the easiest filming location to come spot, but like I said, this is my favorite Christmas movie and there are very few locations that you can do and when I looked online, there were no good videos for this location at all, so I figured we should come out and check it out. And one of the great lines from this movie is when uh, he's just been abducted and his wife is calling in and says, ah, it was a man with a blue leisure suit, a beastly bulging man, the plates were from Kansas. <laughs> As you remember, yeah, that's when Cousin Eddie has rolled into town on fumes and is staying with the Griswolds and uh, since Clark is paying for his whole family's Christmas, this is Cousin Eddie's attempt at uh, getting Clark something really nice. Still pretty cool to see and the movie still holds up. It's a total classic, even from 1989 it still holds up. Now of course Clark needs his bonus to put in the pool and so when Frank Shirley gets brought to his house, right in the middle of all that hoopla, Frank Shirley reinstates the bonuses, even adding on to it and uh, Clark is the hero once and for all finally in a vacation movie. Now let's find a post office. All right, I found our post office. Let's drop off a few things and get on with our day. All right, let's try and get a haircut today. Yeah, I've been trying to do that for like the last two or three days, but uh, the person I wanted to cut my hair wasn't here, so walked in, there they were, got it cut, we're out of here. All right, John and I are gonna take a little bit of a hike. Same trail as the other day. Good job, Ja. All right, we're in the last leg of the hike. Look at the clouds over there, how dark they are. Hey, Cha, great job, dude. That was not too bad today. I thought the ground would be a little bit more muddy than it is, so that's even more of a plus that the, uh, the ground's somewhat dry. Let's find our way back down. There's downtown LA through all that haze. Now we just have to work our way all the way down. Fun little fact about National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. The woman who played Aunt Bethany, the one who brought the jello mold and they fried her cat, she was actually the voice of Betty Boop and Olive Oil from the cartoons. Ja, do you feel like you're walking on Mars? Do you even know what Mars is? starting to get dark, but I got my guard dog, so I'm safe. As I'm walking to catch the metro train, I look up and what do I see? Look who is here. Oh, that's my train. You guys are gonna love this. What a display. And they're technically calling this Winter Glow. It's a very interesting display and layout, so we'll take a path up here and around the tree, around the fountains, and work our way all the way down. The fountains look great, don't they?
Now let's go up these, this set of stairs under this fluorescent tunnel. There's City Hall. The tree looks great. Now we're gonna go down the opposite side. What is this? And take a look at these crazy slinky looking trees that keep changing colors. Wow. I think from here you can get a little bit better idea of what that was. Now whatever this thing is, it's interactive because I see people inside making those things move. going on over here some of them aren't working or they have to touch or and here's the infinity mirror Now I think this is just a stage that they have lit up so you can take your photos in front of it if you want. Yep, that's definitely what that is. They even have these trees lit up all creepy and blue. Oh, I see a lot of color ahead. This could be interesting. This little installation is called the Starry Night. Nice little concept. Interesting. And then even these lining the walkway are part of the display. It's called the Luminaria Walkway. Here's the menorah. And here in this tent is the original guiding light. Now this is titled California Visions. But it looks like a crazy Rubik's Cube, doesn't it? Or even more so like one of those preschool toys that you'd put a block into. Looks awesome though. That looks great. 
cool thing is that it has a lot of um, you can see the mission there a lot of things that reflect the city Hollywood and this is free for everyone to come out and just kind of walk through and there are quite a few people out here so it was not a waste Grand Park right there Now let's go take a look at this tree. This thing is huge and it looks like something out of Whoville. Very Seussian. It says Grand Park, the park for everyone. Now I totally agree with this. Right there, read that. It says, do something every day to remind this city why the hell you're here. That goes for your city too. Cue the Griswold music when Clark finally gets the uh, tree to light, gets the house to light and everything, hit the hallelujah chorus. <laughs> Man, that thing looks awesome. We're gonna go ahead and end the vlog now. I want to thank Karen Crow for becoming my newest Patreon and hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Put a little Christmas spirit in your heart. Have a great night and we'll see you all tomorrow. Good